However, I was born with um, no enamel on my teeth, and so it was just the brown dentin. Um, so as my teeth came in as a little girl, um, they were brown, and um, kids would make fun of me. So I was bullied a lot growing up in school. Um, I wore big, thick glasses. Uh, my vision was not good, and so um, I was bullied a lot growing up in school. So it looked as if they were rotted, or uh, they were just brown, jagged, looked like rocks. Um, you know, kids would call me, you know, rock muncher and things like that. Four eyes. Um, you can see into the future with those those glasses. Uh, you know, who am I going to marry? How many kids I'm going to have? Things like that. You know, and as a, as a little girl, you dream of getting married and having kids and having a family and white picket fence and all that good stuff. And so that, that was my dream as a little girl. And um, growing up, I remember the boys didn't like me. And um, so that just confirmed rejection. My kindergarten picture, I smiled. I think I was so um, innocent uh, to where I didn't know anything was wrong, anything was different with me than the other kids. Um, I smiled in that picture, but then immediately in the first grade picture, I smiled with my mouth closed. And then every picture from then on, I never smiled with my mouth open. About middle school, my parents uh, had gained enough money financially to help take to get some, some work done for my teeth. When I got to high school, um, I got contacts and um, my teeth were beginning to be fixed and so boys started to notice me. Um, the first time that a boy noticed me, I ran with that and uh, ended up being in a relationship with this guy for um, about nine years. And uh, he wasn't faithful to me and didn't treat me right, um, but I held on to that because I thought that was my only chance for this family that I wanted. So I just kept looking, looking for a man, um, thinking that that's what was gonna fix me and make me feel accepted. And um, so I got into another relationship. The first time that this, this guy cheated on me, I remember uh, feeling the overwhelmingness of rejection again and not being worthy um, and not being lovable. And I recalled how the pain medication made me feel um, when I would be in that dental chair having surgery and would relax and go to sleep. And I remembered how that made me feel. And um, that's when I began to take uh, the pain medication to numb her on the inside. Um, and so that became a, that started a 10 year um, warfare with pain medication addiction. I uh, told my parents um, that I needed help. And so I looked for a place and I knew I needed, I knew what I needed. I needed Jesus Christ uh, to come in and make me whole. And um, so that's when I found women at the well in Athens. Tennessee and um, God has used that place to um, restore my relationship with him and um, he has actually uh, filled a void in my life that I searched for a man um, to fill. Um, he is now my husband, um, he is my father, he is my friend and um, I know that he's all that I need and I knew that in my brain but to feel that in your heart is a completely different thing and we do it a semi-annual fashion show um, at Women at the Well um, to, pers to uh, benefit the ministry. And um, never been in a fashion show, uh, never thought I was fashion show type. And um, so I didn't think about it. Well, uh, one of the staff members asked for me to be in the fashion show. And um, on that day of the fashion show when I got dressed up and, and makeup on and my hair done, I literally sat in the little dressing room um, and just wept because I felt pretty that day, and it wasn't an out, outward pretty, it was an inward clean, um, whole, uh, who, who, who God created me to be. I felt like that girl that day. How great the love of Jesus Christ. cross of Calvary The blood was shed that pardons me No longer bound No more defeat How great the love